theory of computation, we are going to talk two session about the mathematical preliminaries that we would need for this course. Let's see what we got here. These topics are from the discrete mathematics and we will be using them a lot in this course. So first one is the sets, Cartesian product, functions, and graphs. All right. And even though they are reviewing things, but we will, you know, have some uh, question in all exams about these four topics. Let's start with the sets. As you might know, set theory is a very important topic in mathematics. It's the, you know, building blocks of the mathematics. This guy, the German mathematician George Cantor, uh, created this theory, and he is also famous for uh, working on the infinities. So before him, we taught, I mean, the scientists taught that all of the infinite sets are the same, but he proved beautifully that real numbers are bigger than the, uh, for example, integers or natural numbers. So how can we define sets? Probably you have seen this in your discrete mathematics, set is a collection of objects or elements, right? When you look at this definition, what does it imply? It's a collection of objects. I can talk, you know, a little bit about the, the definition in mathematics and science. Uh, when we define something, we need to use some words that are already defined or they are a primitive concept. So in this definition, I use the collection objects. Are they predefined? Everybody knows that, what it is? No, it is not the case. This definition that you will see in many books is not a good definition because we are using some words that they are more complicated than the set. So when we say collection, what is collection, right? That's why some uh, mathematician and some scientists are saying that set cannot be defined. Set is, is a primitive uh, concept, like the you know point in geometry. You remember in geometry, all of the geometries start with the point, but we cannot you know define point. That's why we consider the point as a primitive concept, something that everybody understands that. All right, let's move on. Uh, now, take a look at this definition again. What does it imply? The first thing that it implies that the order doesn't matter in set, right? The second thing that we, we can, uh, you know, imply from this definition is that since everything in the universe is dis distinct and what is the math's job? Math wants to simulate the universe, right? So that's why we say the objects or the elements of the set should be distinct as well, all right? If this is the case, the object should be distinct, then if we repeat something in a, in a set, it doesn't count, just one of them counts. I will, I will take some example uh, in a few minutes uh, to show what I mean, okay? So this is the definition of set, right? And in other hand, we have another, op uh, let's say, collection or whatever we call that, uh, a list. A list is a collection of ordered objects. Okay, 
and we will get back to list later but i put this definition here just to be able to compare the set and the list so list is a collection of ordered objects so how can we represent sets we have three methods to represent sets the first method we call it roster method and we, we just enumerate i use this word a lot okay we enumerate the you know its members and we put all of those members inside two curly braces like this for example the set of lowercase english alphabet right and you know that when the pattern of something is obvious from the context we can use this ellipsis tree dot 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 to uh, you know prevent uh, you know to save some time to save some uh, spaces how can we name a set usually we use capital letters or english or let's say uh, greek so for example a b c or greek in this course we will be using this sigma a lot sigma or gamma a lot for example sigma is equal to zero and one this is just a set right another example the set of natural numbers between three and 100 between two and 100 not including yeah. all right another examples so this is another examples train bike airplane bus xyz binary numbers okay let me ask a little bit more smart questions is this a set a b a a b b a a a b b b these are meaningless what are they in the definition so you should refer always to the definition hey we said set is a collection of object or elements right did we say anything about meaningful or meaningless in the definition no we didn't right so as long as it's a collection of the object or elements we would say it is a set all right so how about this five train apple uh, you know california they are irrelevant again you can say yeah we didn't say anything about the relevance of the objects how about this one it is ordered we don't care about the order or unordered collection of the objects so all of these are sets but the most important one is this is this a set this guy is equivalent to one two three you remember in the previous slide i said if we if, if it is repeated it doesn't count right this guy is equal to this do you agree that and okay so since this is a set it's equivalent this should be set but we don't care about this uh these uh, repeated things right it is a still a set but one of them will be counted okay let's move on so second representation of the set is when diagram we put all of the elements inside a geometrical figure like circle ellipse rectangle or whatever right and we call it Venn diagram this is an example John Wynn was a British mathematician and this uh, technique was invented by him sometimes that we want to visualize a set we use Venn diagram okay set size size of a set or cardinality of a set is the number of its elements and we denote it by these two vertical bars okay so we just need to count the number of elements and we put 
uh, here the number. Okay, so what is the size of this set? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five. How about this one? Yeah, six is the correct. Yeah. So because we have one here, one here, not doesn't count. Eleven here, eleven here, and how about seven? Seven doesn't count. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Be careful about this. Okay, membership and not membership. What does it mean? When we want to show that something is a member of a set, we use this epsilon. And when we want to say that something is not member, we just cross off this epsilon and we use this. For example, terrain is a member of this C guy right so it's a it's you know we say the train belongs to c or is a member of c and this bus does not belong to c or is not a member of c okay so let me give you some notes here since set is very important in our course it is very important to uh, have this idea that when we say we, we, we know a set, a set is known, it means that its boundary is clearly defined, right? So you should be able to make a boundary around the set in such a way that clearly you can say, yeah, this guy belongs to in this set and this guy does not belong to this set. This is a very important thing. You should be able to clearly create this boundary. In that case, we would say, yeah, we know this set. This set is known now. Okay. What exactly belongs to a set and what does not. So I want to say that not membership is as important as the membership. You should be very clear about that. Okay, all of you guys know what is the empty set. Empty set is a set that does not have any member. And we define it or we denote it with either two empty curly braces or phi. Like this. So the question is, what is the size of the phi? Zero. Yeah. So here, here is some examples here. Uh, the set of F students of this class, uh, A students of this class, yeah, that's empty. No, F students is better. Yeah. Or uh, the eighth day of a week. These are empty sets. I will get back to this empty set. Uh, because it's an important thing, um, probably at the end of this uh, lecture. Another important thing is universal set. Sometimes you are talking about something, but we should make a big boundary about the, the all of the elements that uh, you know can be considered. For example, if you are uh, writing a code for the the students you should be able to say, okay, this software is only for this university or is only for this class or it is only for the, the United States students, right? So you should be able to make a boundary of what you are talking about. So we call it universe of the, the, the discourse or just universal set in the set theory, okay? First, let me define that. So universal set of a set is the set containing all possible elements under consideration, and we denote it by U, the capital U. Here is some examples. This is a simple example. So if A is two, three, four, then the universal set of this 
A could be something like that. Yeah. Or it can be something like that. Or even itself. You see? So this is itself. It can be the universal set of itself, right? But definitely this is not a universal set for 2, 3, 4, because at least it should be as big as itself. So this is the universal set. Let me take some uh, you know, pra more practical examples. Uh, again, return back to our A students of this class. Okay, so what could be uh, the universal set of this Z? The class, yeah. So all the students of this class, or we can say all of the students of this school, or all of the students of this state, or all of the students of the world. It depends on many, many parameters. But you, you know, you understand the concept of the universal set. We, we will get back to this universal set as well later. Okay. How can we represent by Venn diagram? We usually use a rectangle like this. So if this is the universal set, then we show the universal set by this rectangle like this. All right, let's move to another concept. We call it subsets. So subset, when we have a, a set like A, A is subset of B. In this case, all of the elements of A should belong to B as well. And we denote that with this notation and pay attention to this uh, equal sign at the you know the bottom of this right so this is a subset okay here is an example so b is one two three four and then if we define a as two three you will see that a is a subset of b because all of the elements of a belongs to b as well Okay, we have another concept here. We call it proper subset. So proper subset is the same as the subset, but we are sure that they are not equal. Somehow we are sure that they are not equal. And we use this notation. You see, there is no equal here anymore. Right? So A... Is a, is a proper subset of B, like this. And in this case, then we call B as the superset of A. And here is an example. Actually, this is the previous example. So in this case, A and B are not equal. Then we, we could say that A is a proper subset of B. And, and also we could say B is a superset of A. Equality of two sets. Two sets are equal if they're, they both have the same elements. Yeah. And this relationship is denoted by familiar and regular equal sign. Also, there is another way to prove that two sets are equal. And that's by using the subset notation. So we would say... A equal to B, if and only if A is a subset of B and at the same time B is a subset of A. If both of these conditions satisfy, then there is no way that they are not equal. They should be equal. How about finite sets? How do you define finite sets? If a set is called finite, if its size is a natural number. We already define the size of a set, right? The only thing that we need to know what is natural number here, I assume that it is a primitive concept. Yeah, 
But I need to mention that right now. And let me first uh, define the national number. National number is this. The set of national numbers we denote it by n like this. And it starts with 0, 1, 2 and blah, blah. All right. Some authors might say, yeah, oh, you know, uh, natural numbers start with one. But no, I disagree. Natural numbers start with zero. So these are this is the set of natural numbers. And this is the meaning and definition of the finite set. If we can represent the size of a set by a natural number, then we would say that uh, that uh, set is finite. Let me take an example. Is this finite set? We would say the size of this set is 26, and 26 is a natural number. So we always should refer to the definition, right? Okay. How about phi? Is phi a finite set? Yes, phi is a finite set because its size is a zero, and zero is a natural number. So exactly, you know, based on the definition. So what, what about the infinite set? Yeah, if we cannot define or if we cannot express a set size by a natural number, then we would say uh, it is infinite. For example, the z or integer numbers, right? Or the natural numbers itself, right? So this guy, um, you know, we cannot, we cannot, wait a minute, wait a minute, something just crossed my mind. When we continue this uh, natural numbers, we reach this, right? Can I say that, hey, the size of n is this, and this belongs to the natural numbers. So it is finite. What do you say, guys? Uh, look at this argument. So when we continue the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, blah, 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 and we reach here, right? And what is the size of this n? I, I would say the size of this n, because we reach at this point, is equal to infinite, infinite symbol, whatever it is, right? So since we could, listen to this one, since we could express the size of n with a natural number, this, then based on that definition in the previous slide, we would say n is a finite because we could express it with a natural number. In this guy, whatever it is, it is not a number. It is a concept. You should put this argument, this uh, reasoning in your argument that this is not a number. It's a concept in mathematics. When we cannot count, the, the number is so big that we cannot reach at that point, we would say, okay, we represent it with this. So this is not a specific number. It's not a natural number. So the, all of this stuff that I said is not valid. So I, I wanted to say that it is not a natural number. The big point and the focus of the point is this. This guy is not a natural number, even though you can say the size of n, whatever, let's call, let's call it, for example, a. The size of A, even though you might say, okay, it is infinite, but since the infinite is not a natural number, it's just a concept. That's why we, we cannot use this, uh, you know, this reasoning and say, okay, so this A is finite. Anyway, so let's turn to other representation of the, uh, the, the sets. That's the most important one. We call it set builder. And we will be using this set builder a lot in this course. Okay. So how can we represent a set by set builder? We use this template. So we put a variable here and then colon and then we describe 
uh, you know the, the properties of the, the elements of those set here again uh, you know some some authors might use the vertical bar we don't care you can use either uh, cologne or uh, vertical bar okay so let me take an example to clarify what i am talking about so represent the following set by a set builder all natural numbers between one and five both including so let's use this template here let's call it a equal to first we need a member variable let's call it x colon now i need to describe what kind of uh, members we have in this uh, set right the set of all natural numbers so definitely x belongs to natural numbers and comma it is between one and five so x is equal to one and five you see how we describe so here we put an a dummy variable and then we describe what these variables looks like so x belongs to n and x between one and five okay the only thing that he here is remains that this x belongs to n in in fact it is a universal set of A. It shows that the nature of the elements belongs to the natural number here. It could be uh, integer, it could be real number, but this we are describing this set, right? In fact, we uh, we put the universal set to define the nature of the elements here. I will take some more examples to clarify that let let's simplify in two steps this definition first we can use that universal set instead of the uh, that variable we can move the universal set to the variable part what does it mean so look at this we put a member here and then we put the universal set here we can move this here to make some room this way so it is fine here x x belongs to n such that x between one and five another thing that we can use for the set builders is using the pattern that that is the most important part what what do i, what do I mean pattern what is this here is the template so instead of putting a, a, just a simple variable here i put a pattern here yeah and then i describe we we need to describe that pattern so let me take an example look at this set 0 3 6 9 12 15 so very clearly you can see that all of these guys are multiplication of three right so we can define regularly we would say x equal to x equal to 3k and then k belongs to n and then you limit the uh, you know boundaries of the k between 0 and 6 all right so based on our knowledge so far we could we could say this or also we could actually no we cannot move this because it's a k it's not x right now based on this new template i would say we need to put a pattern here and this is our pattern right we would say this this set has some members whose pattern is 3k and then you define just k okay and this is something that we we will be using a lot so pattern we would prefer to have a pattern here all right okay so let me now give you some notes about this set builder thing as as i said we use this set builder and especially the last thing that i said the pattern thing tremendously in this course a lot every day you will see a lot of this 
you know, set builders, right? And also in this course, by default, we will be using natural numbers. So natural number is our default numbers, right? Since this is the case, we don't need to you to mention it again. So in all of your assignments, in all of the exams, the first thing that you can assume is the number is a natural number. Based on this um, information, you could uh, you know uh, convert this and you should just remove this point and x. By default, we know that x is a natural number, right? Another thing I want to mention here is let me simulate this set builder by a Java code. This set builder, what, what does it produce? When you look at this, you would say, okay, so this is one, two, three, four, and five. I, I want to say that this, when you look at this set, it it produces one two three four five so how can you simulate uh, this with java code very easy you, know, you guys are uh, very professional in using the high level languages it is equivalent this set is equivalent this for loop look at this x is equal to one x less than or equal to five x plus plus yeah here in this part of the code you will see one, two, three, four, and five. So this is a simple simulation of the this set builder. I mentioned this just we, we won't use Java or any other high level languages at all this in this code. I just wanted to say that there is an equivalency between this and this for loop. And when you look at this set, you just uh, you know imagine that it is generating or uh, building five numbers like exactly like this look what else I have here uh, the comma you you notice that comma in the set builder uh, is equivalent to and when you are describing something yeah, when you say X belongs to n comma and something else here this comma is equivalent to logical and oops sorry and or just and right all right so if this is the case if i need or what should i do then you cannot use the comma anymore you should explicitly say or or use the this guy which is a logical uh, or all right let me take an example and tell you how horrible it would be if you use the and. It would be totally different uh, answer. Look at this example. If we want to describe the numbers less than minus one and greater than two, then you need to use or. You would say x such that x is less than minus one or equal or x is greater than sorry about that or equal to two something like this right this or important if you put comma here it will be disaster so it, it would be totally different thing right okay now my question is if you put and or comma here what would be this uh, set you know, I mean, what does this set will be equivalent to? Empty set, exactly. So if we put comma here, this will be phi. All right. So we'll be, be very careful about this. All right. Uh, our next definition will be complement. What is the complement of a set? We usually uh, denote it by a bar if the set name is A. And we define it by set builder. Yeah, this is this is a set builder definition of the A bar. So X such that X belongs to U 
the universal set and x does not belong to a all right i would say oh let me ask this question is this equivalent to x such that x does not belong to a can i remove that x belongs to you looks like that you guys in the discrete mathematics probably you did not see such thing that x belongs to you is equivalent to true when you say x does not belong to you it is false x belongs to phi is false and x does not belongs to phi is always true you see so probably you have not seen these four statements logical statements in the discrete mathematics or you maybe you have seen or forgot that right so if this is the case then x equal to u is a true statement right and true statement you remember that the comma as i said it's a and true and everything anything is equal to anything i mean if we have a true and something it will be the same thing you can eliminate that's true so this is a logical argument and reasoning system that's why we can remove this x equal to u from this definition so and the venn diagram of the a bar uh, if this is the a so the rest of that will be a bar as you know to specify the a bar we need the u so let me take an example um, for example here a is equal to three or and six and u is this what is the a bar you just need to remove these three and six and the remaining will be a bar okay now it's time to have a very quick uh, in class exercise uh, you know the result of this exercise i will need it to explain something in, in the next uh, slides write all subsets of the this guy all of the subset of this guy what is the first one phi yeah phi is the subset of every uh, set uh, a b a b any objection to this so these are the all of the subsets of a how about this one one two three yeah you know that so first is phi and then one then two three and then one two one three two three and one two three right okay so why i make these exercises because because I want to say that if I put a set here, the set of all of the subsets, we call it power set. So if I give you a set like this and say, okay, make the power set of this, you just create all of the subsets here and put it in, in a bigger set. We call it subset here is the definition what is the power set definition is the set of all subsets of set a right and we denote it with 2 to the a if then the set's name is a then this its power set's name will be 2 to the a okay and note that this is just a symbol it, it's just an uh, it, it's a notation it's a symbol right okay so if this is the b what is the 2 to the b right we solved this problem in the previous slide so 2 to the b will be the set of all subsets see 
is a set whose elements are sets. How can we define a power set by the set builder? Can I say here, look at this, 2 to the b, how can I define that? It has some x's, but how can I describe this x? They are subsets of b. So this is the definition of the power set by set builder. So some examples of power sets. Uh, one to three. Okay, so let me ask this question. What is the cardinality of the S and 2 to the S? I'm trying to find a relationship between these two sizes. So S is 3, right? 3 member. 2 to the S is 8, right? Is there any relationship between these two numbers? Yeah, we can say 8 is 2 to the 3 and this is the same three. Ah, cool. Right? So here is the relationship between them. Two to the size of the power set is equal to two to the size of the set itself. Another example. So S is equal to A, B, C, D. If I say without creating this power set, what is the size of the power set? Based on this relationship, you would say, okay, S is 4, right? And I know that this is equal to size of the S. And since the size of the S is 4, it will be 2 to the 4 equal to 16. All right? Okay, so I have some uh, exercise for you guys to make sure that... Actually, I, I know that I am refreshing your mind. So this sets some, something that you have learned in the probably in high school and um, in discrete mathematics. And you have seen this in many places. I want to make sure that we are so clear about the concepts because, I, as I said, we will be using this a lot in this course okay so here i ask you to just refresh your mind what is the empty set yeah we know the fee uh, universals is u uh, eight is member of a eight is member of a and so forth you can continue to fill out these uh, things uh, let me now talk about what is the relationship between two sets we have two sets, right? Set A and set B. What are the all of the possible relationship that they have? This is my question now. So one relationship could be disjoint. They have no common element. We call this disjoint. Or they have some, you know, common elements we would say they are intersecting each other. In some cases, B is inside A, so it's a proper subset. Or A is inside B. Or they are equal. So we have five possible relationships between two sets. Okay, so now let's talk about the set operations. You are familiar with the, these four operations. Union. When we union to A and U, B, then if we want to describe it with the, uh, the set builder, we would say the result of this union have some elements in such a way that X either belongs to A or it belongs to B. So, if this is A and this is the B, then the union will be whole of this. So, so if you want to describe this, 
how can you describe this if something is here or something is here or something is here right either the element this x belongs to a or it belongs to b when we say or it might be both of them in that case some elements are here right so how about the intersection is something that it should be here it should be you know belongs to both of them that's why we say and minus minus is this is if this is a and this is a b is here all of those members that belongs to here that they, they belongs to a and they don't belong to b and the complement whatever we saw that before right if something if this is a the rest of that will be uh, the a bar so these are the set operations and we also have some properties of the sets so the commutative law a union b is equal to b union a and whatever we say for the union it's uh, correct for the intersection as well so the association law and the distribution law okay and also we have some identities and these identities are very important to make sure that you understand very well the concept of these sets and whatever i said so far you need you need to fill out all of these uh, first i ask you to represent the set operation by venn diagram and also oh this is an important one this is important one so if i am asking that if we have this relationship for example a union b is equal to a what is the relationship between the set a and set b so if you can solve these problems then definitely uh, we would have we don't we don't have any problem with the sets okay yeah i have a note here the exercises are are not mandatory so but i do recommend you guys do that because the you know the questions in the uh, quizzes will similar to this stuff so if something is mandatory definitely i will announce that via the canvas all right otherwise everything is optional okay and the last thing i want to talk how can we represent the fee with the set builder fee is equal to x such that what i want to talk about this to find this let me make a trick i start from this a minus b what is a minus b we would say x such that x belongs to a and x does not belong to b do you agree that so since this is a general definition in set theory so it should be correct it should be a true statement for every a and b no matter what the a is no matter what the b is right since this is the case i would suggest to convert b to the a what does it mean what, wherever i have b i convert it to a it should be correct yeah a minus a and this a all right now let's simplify that what we get here a minus a is phi right and how about here x such that x belongs to a and x does not belong to a what the hell is this you are you probably are thinking more polite than me of course so if x belongs to a you call it p then x does not belong to a will be negation of p and p and negation of p is what false so what we get here 
phi is equal to x such that false. So what does it mean? It means that any false statement you put it here, it will be equal to, to the phi. So this is the definition or uh, of phi with the set builder. Okay. And here is the example. X is the eighth day of the week. Since it is a false statement, we would say it is equal to phi. Another example is X does not belong to you. You remember I said when we say X does not belong to you, it is a false statement. So this is equivalent to, I'm sorry, phi. We are done. Have a great day, people. See you next time.